Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where leaders share their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, founder of Women of Denver, and I'm here with Danielle Norris, CEO of Savenco and social enterprise expert who helps businesses develop sustainable and profitable do-good business models. She's got an MBA, she's socially and politically active, and super passionate about helping socially conscious businesses grow. Danielle, I'm so honored to have you with me today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be on your show. <laughs> very exciting. Wonderful. So I have first firsthand knowledge of Danielle and the things that she does. She has helped me single-handedly figure out what I'm really doing in the world. Like, what is that secret mission? And I think that's one of your superpowers in your business is helping people to be able to figure out what are you really trying to do? What is your mission? What is your purpose? Can you talk a little bit about that and how you help people figure that out? Yeah, so when we talk about social enterprise, um, social enterprise is just a, a business model where um, you're generating revenues but also living um, a mission or you have a mission or a cause that you are fighting against. And to be able to fight against um, any sort of injustice in the world, you have to be very committed because it's hard work. So one of our main items that we do with our clients, uh, first off, our first session, is to uncover the underlying purpose, individual purpose that the leader has, um, so that that pur purpose can go within their business. So that on those you know, 24 hour work days <laughs> where oh, you haven't <laughs> slept, um, you can still keep going because you are really adhering to what, what's important to you and inside of you. Yeah, that's so important. And the social enterprise piece, so I know that there's a lot of people, when I first met you, I had no idea what that was. So there's a lot of people that are going to need an explanation to understanding how the mission and the social enterprise piece go together. But let's start by explaining what is a social enterprise business. Definitely. So a social enterprise is um, either a nonprofit or a for-profit, it doesn't necessarily matter, that has um, the business acumen. So they're literally taking the for-profit business acumen and then they're taking the nonprofit mission and we're just combining them together. So you really are, it, there's, there's quite a few social enterprises in the world, big time ones. So we have Tom's Shoes is probably the most recognizable one. But social enterprise has been a longstanding business model that is just now getting a lot of attention in the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's all that that is. If you're, you're doing good in the world and you're uh, fighting against the uh, injustice uh -huh. and you're making revenues because okay. having money and even profit is very important to be able to spread your impact. Okay, so one thing I know about you is that you are uber passionate. So what is one of the things that it, was there a moment in your life or was there something that drove you to this passion? You're passionate about both the social piece and you really care about helping business owners. Definitely, definitely. Well, so just like we consult and we give um, advice to our clients, we have to hold true and I have to hold true to what we do. So the purpose or me getting involved in social enterprise came from when I was younger. Um, when I was in my teens, uh, I was considered an at-risk youth. And, and when I was 16, I was given a or assigned a caseworker. So I went into the system. And for the next 18 months, uh, that caseworker guided me through, um, really guided me from you know poverty and being at risk to being sustainable and living on my own and really flourishing wow and she was she was everything to me and during that during that time um after i got out of high school and graduated high school and you know became the one percent that made it uh she actually lost her nonprofit, so the nonprofit went out of business and it really hit me hard because i wanted other other youth to be able to experience that and yeah. I couldn't and um, that kind of that that led on to my adult life I I've always been an entrepreneur so um, at 24 I had uh, I owned a real estate a residential real estate firm and um, I made it about a year into the recession and had a big awakening in 
in just how business works and how fragile it was. And it doesn't matter how good you are, if the market crashes, you're going to be, <laughs> you're going, to be going right along with oh. it. Um, so two important lessons I learned, um, one on the nonprofit side that, you know, these nonprofits have the responsibility to resolve and fix these main issues of the yeah. world, but then they don't have any money to support it. And then on the for-profit side, you have um, mass amounts of money or you have the potential to have large amounts of money and they are not designated to actually do good in the world. Yeah. So it, both sides and I was just, both those experiences came to one and when I found out social enterprise in one of my uh, undergrad classes, it's just always stuck with me. And it's just, I mean, truly the res resolution of so many problems Yeah. Um, on this balance of doing good and um, being sustainable. I love that combination of just putting the, the not-for-profit profit mission-driven model with the profit-driven. I mean, I feel like, um, and this is just my opinion, is I feel like Profit for-profit businesses have a great potential to make, to make, uh, to, to do good in the world, because they have all this income, they have this revenue, and they're able to really push it out and incorporate the do good portion that you talk about in addition to serving people in the ways that they normally do. I mean, let's say Google. I mean, they have so much reach. They reach people in countries that don't even have running water. There are people all over the world that know who they are, and when they do good in the world it has a massive effect mm -hmm. and it causes other people to want to follow in their footsteps and do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just that, that reach and, um, and, and being able to have large scale impact. And it's a very tight line that you have to, you, you have to work by. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if everybody could be a social enterprise and everyone would be, I mean, who right. wouldn't want to just do good and make money? Um, it, it just doesn't work that way. And it's just because the ecosystem, especially in the United States, the, the business ecosystem was not built that way. Yeah. So we really like to deconstruct the system that's, that's there now and really reconstruct it into what we like. So tell me more about your personal life and some of the transformations that you've gone through as a person and as a business owner. I mean, I'm sure that, um, you know, through all the things that you've been through, I mean, you said you've been through the recession, you've learned a lot of lessons. Can you share at least just give us one life lesson that you really, really, um, that really rings true for you and that you feel like other people would resonate with as well? Yeah, the biggest life lesson um, when it comes to my personal life is business is your personal life. There's no leave work and leave it all behind. Oh. Um, that's just not true. So why not just be authentic every place you're at when you're at home and when you're at work? Um, and, and that goes hand in hand with kids and marriage and, and bringing your, one good example, bringing your kids to work. Um, why is this just not normal? I mean, if they can sit down you know, long enough to not cause a mess, um, why, can't, why can't they enjoy that? And it's just this, this separation that, that doesn't need to happen because um, it, you can have both at the same time. So it's there. So what are the major things that, that drive you? I mean, do you have, I, I know that you're super structured. Is it the structure? Are there people in your life that continue to push you to succeed? Yes. Yeah, so early on, and actually this goes back to my story as a youth, um, a big lesson I learned through running through the system is you really have to surround yourself with inf influential people, people that are not going to be naysayers. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard because you have to be like, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you very much because you're a naysayer yeah. or you're not, you're not bringing that positive vibe. Um, so. I definitely stick to people that that are like-minded, that are positive, that are growth-oriented. You just have to you have to be around those people. Um, and then I have a wonderful family. I do have um, three children as well, and I've been married for 13 years. So it's really a blessing to just be able to go home and have all that love there oh, to support that's you. So beautiful. Yes. So yeah, I think that is one of the most powerful lessons is 
knowing who those people are that need to be in your life and, and bringing those in more often and pushing away the people that, that drain your energy. I found that one of the things that was um, holding me back during life is always having people around that were draining. Every time you pick up the phone and you feel bad or you start an argument, every time I get off the phone with this person and I have an argument with my husband, that's not me, that's the energy that that person brought. Yeah. So it's so important in order to just keep yourself in the right place energetically and po just having that positivity to be around the right people. Definitely. And um, in, in, in my history, growing up in a, a poverty neighborhood and living within um, generational poverty, yeah. really you, you are around a lot of naysayers and you're around, um, it, it's just hard. It's hard to be in that in that area so you have to be strong and be able to blossom and say i'm sorry i really love you but i i, I can't hang out as much with you yeah so. that's so powerful definitely takes a lot of strength to be able to do that mm -hmm. so i admire that yes thank you <laughs> so who besides the person that you talked about earlier on that was um, your social worker um, who in your life has been a great mentor? Who, do you have any mentors right now that you really respect and admire and that are helping you to succeed in your life right now? Yes, I'm a huge advocate of having a mentor. Um, I, I actually have more mentors than I can handle now. <laughs> <laughs> Where I had to be like, I can't handle anymore. Um, I'm really the advocate of, you know, if you, if you want to be someone, you better be sending them an email and saying, yeah. I want to be you. Let's get together and chat about this. Um, recently, though, I've had some amazing mentors coming from the corporate world. Mm -hmm. So I did work in the corporate world for um, about eight, eight plus years, and, um, and and taking those leaders and just you know being open and say I really need you to to guide me. Um, and now with my company, we have a board of, of five, an advisory board of five, where they're really just my mentors. Wow. And I was just like, hey, you're my mentor. Would you like to be on my advisory board as well to guide us you know, through our journey? That's so valuable. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your favorite tips for business owners who want to really just go in there and start with a business model that is a social enterprise, that is a do-good business? What are your favorite tips to, to share with them? Um, the biggest tips um, definitely make it stem from your purpose. So you have to understand what your purpose in life is. And everyone has one and they have one overarching one. So really make sure you understand what that is so that you can attach whatever you're doing to that purpose. And then the second thing is you got to have grit. You have Ooh. got to be the last person standing. Yes. So I actually gave this conversation this morning because I'm I'm sick. So um, one of my, um, my one of my founders was like, "Oh, you're sick. You stay home." I'm like, "That's not what successful people do. You got to be there if you're leading, and um, and and be the strong one in those situations when other people can't be strong, or when other people can't be authentic, yeah. um, or when other people don't have a voice. Just know you have to be there." So attaching that purpose, having that grit, and get help. Um, a lot of times when it comes to mission-driven or purpose-driven businesses, there's this overarching assumption, well, I'm doing good, so everyone's gonna come by me. I'm, I'm changing the world, everyone's gonna love me. No, no, you have got to follow the normal business strategies that everyone else has to follow, and you also have to do good. So yes. you're, you're, you're trying to balance two things at once and you cannot do that alone and, and you need help. Yeah. To do it. I think people struggle with that regardless of what kind yes. of business model they're in. They think, oh, people are gonna come to me, right? Yes. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, it's good, they're all gonna come. But even more so though, when, it, when it's you know doing good, because it's like, why wouldn't anyone wanna do this? I'm changing yeah. the world. <laughs> why wouldn't anybody wanna change the world with me? I come know. on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it doesn't work that way. <laughs> well, awesome. Is there anything else that you wanna share before we uh, head out? Uh, the biggest part is if you're a business owner or a leader in an organization, realize that you t you, you're you in that position to change things and you have the responsibility to make big changes, big positive changes, and don't let that 
go aside. You're responsible to do that if you're in that leadership position. So get out there and change the world and make a difference and go social enterprise. Woo! Awesome. All right. That was amazing. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me, Crystal Covington, and my amazing guest, Danielle. Ah! And check out Sabenco if you're interested in becoming a social enterprise with your business. Um, thank you for watching Inside the Women of Denver. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you again next time. <laughs>